Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at goal, joining you halfway through the international break. Just one more week to go. England playing last night, Emil Smith Rowe making his debut for England, which I'll talk about a little bit later on in the video. Big, big night for him. A few other Arsenal players in action, but it's as usual during these international breaks, pretty dull, let's face it. So I just wanted to pop on here today, talk a little bit about some of the stories, rumours, links doing the rounds as we're getting closer to, to January. There are a few transfer stories emerging now, as is always the way. Um, so I thought I'd give my take on um, uh, on certainly one of the big ones that's been uh, doing the rounds at the moment. That involves Dusan Vlajevic. Uh, I think I probably pronounced that wrong, and I'm sure you'll all call me up on it. <laughs> it's always the way, so why disappoint? Um, but yeah, obviously lots of links with him sort of emerging from Italy that Arsenal are in for him. There's been talks going on with Fiorentina. Fiorentina are over at Arsenal's training base, that sort of thing. Been figures of 80 million euros doing the rounds. Um um, about him and Arsenal. Other stories saying that they've not been picking up, sorry, his agent has been picking up the phone to Arsenal, Fiorentina, and Arsenal are in talks. Arsenal want him, but the agent won't pick up the phone, blah, 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 and all this sort of stuff. Um, but just from my understanding of it, um, is, and I did tweet this out the other day, that um, the, he's not one of Arsenal's targets when it comes to a new striker. I mean, look, that might change as we get closer towards next summer but a lot of the talk is about January and I just don't from what I understand it's just not something that's going to be happening you know this isn't a player Arsenal are talking about for January it's not one um, there's been no negotiations over a possible Jan January transfer it's just not the case and you know whether it's this is sort of agent stuff being put out to help um, I mean it certainly helps Fiorentina putting his name out there because he's out of contract at the end of next season so they ideally want to get him sold either in January certainly in the summer because that's going to be when his price is the highest now because they're in a situation where he's only 21 they're seeing an assets value drop massively so if you suddenly get out there are interested clubs and you suddenly put it out there that one club has come in and is in firm talks and are possibly willing to pay up to 80 million euros that might tempt other clubs into doing business and sort of tempting their hand in terms of January so there is certainly reasons why it's good for Fiorentina that this is out there that Arsenal are in for in for him and looking to sign him in January but as far as I'm aware it's just that's just not the case and he's not someone they're looking at in the January transfer window as a as a possibility he's not targeting there have been no talks no negotiations um I mean he's 21 he does fit the striker the age profile of the players that Arsenal are looking at and they're Arsenal are certainly without doubt um, going to be looking at strikers over the next few months. Again, I'd say it's more likely that will happen in the summer rather than January. I'm just not sure. I'm not convinced that we're going to see massive movement from Arsenal in January. Um, I think it'd be the summer when they'll, you know, they will go pretty big in terms of a striker. They're going to have to bring someone in. I, I have no idea who it's going to be. Um, but they're going to have to bring someone in. You look at Lacazette, it's widely expected that Lacazette's going to go. I'd be very surprised if he signs a new contract. There isn't even one on the table from Arsenal. We're at that stage, I think, where both sides of the party understand that this is probably going to be the end for Lacazette and Arsenal in the summer. Um, and But I doubt they'd get rid of him in January unless a really big bid came in that tempted him in, into doing business. But even then, I'm not sure in terms of would they go out and sign a replacement there or, there and, there and then, or would they want to wait until the summer where they can really assess their options better. Um so I just don't, if if I was an Arsenal fan, well, I am an Arsenal fan, but if you you guys are out there and you're really getting excited about, about a big possible arrival, certainly when it comes to a striker in January, I just wouldn't get, I wouldn't be too um, convinced it's going to happen. Let's put it that way. I just feel it's certainly something they'll wait until the summer to do. Um, and whether it be Vlajevic in the summer, I just don't, I Again, I, I don't think it will be. I just, from what I'm being told, he's not one of the the major targets. Yes, he'd probably even you know be a player they've looked at and would have considered. Everyone would have done, given his contract situation, given his age, given his quality, the goals he's scored in Fiorentina. But it doesn't feel to me, um, from the people that I've spoken to, that he is like right as, uh, as one of the top targets that they're going to be going for in, um, in the summer. I, I would expect that he's going to go elsewhere. He's certainly going to be on the move. But I would expect he's probably going to go elsewhere in it and it's not going to be Arsenal. So if you're a big fan of his, then I wouldn't be too excited when it comes to Arsenal. But, you know, anything can change. We'll have to wait and see what happens when the market really starts to heat up. But as far as I'm aware, that is the situation as it stands, certainly from Arsenal's side, when it comes to Dusan Vlajevic of Fiorentina. 
the striker situation is interesting. Like I said, I do expect Arsenal are going to go in for someone um, in the summer. They're going to have to really when you look at the you, you look at it because Orba's not getting any older. Uh, sorry, not getting any younger. Um, and he will only have a year left of his contract at the start of next season. Lacazette's going to be out of contract. And as I said earlier, I'm expecting won't be at the club next season. Um, Eddie Nketiah doesn't look like he'll be at the club next season. It doesn't look like he's going to sign sign the new contract that Arsenal were hoping he was going to sign last uh, during the summer so they could protect his value. So he'll be he'll be somewhere else. You've got Balogun. Maybe he will, needs to go out on loan, which I think he probably will. Again, I'll speak about him later on in this video. So they're going to have to buy someone in the, in the summer. I think he's there's certainly going to be top of the agenda when it comes to um, revamping the squad. As I've said in previous videos, it's not going to be a summer like the one we've just seen where Arsenal go out and sign six players for a, in a wide number of positions. I think they're certainly going to focus their attention on sort of two, maybe three key areas in the pitch. Certainly a striker central midfielder and then maybe one other position um and i just feel as i said that it's going to be something they'll do in the summer rather than january um there are plenty of strikers out there i think when you look at the sort of play the striker they're gonna they will end up getting it'll be i think he'll probably be in the similar sort of age range to what we've seen in the last couple of transfer windows i think it's pretty clear that's the area that arsenal are targeting i mean wouldn't it be lovely uh uh, Martin Odegaard pulls some strings and ends up getting Haaland over from Borussia Dortmund it's not going to happen let's face it that's not going to happen that's me just joking around so don't get too excited and please if you're a news aggregator or you're a website who tends to lift quotes that I say on these videos don't suddenly run stories saying Arsenal are going to sign uh, Haaland because it's not going to happen but you, you look at some of the players that, that sort of age range I've mentioned someone like Jonathan David before again I'm not saying that Arsenal are going to sign him there has been interested in him in the past I think he'll probably will leave Lille in the summer he's had a very good season he's going from strength to strength um, and it, that that's the sort of striker I can imagine Arsenal signing you know there is taught that they're interested in Dominic Calvert-Lewin. I think that he will cost a lot of money. If I to get him out of Everton would not be an easy one. Um, uh, Ollie Watkins at Aston Villa. Again, lots of talk about him. He is a big Arsenal fan. But again, it would take you're going to have that English tax on those sort of players. And, you know, didn't put Arsenal off signing Ben White. But I think with a striker, we're talking even more than sort of £50 million. Pounds. Um, that they spent on Ben White to get either of those two strikers. So I'm not sure. But that's the sort of striker I can imagine Arsenal going for. Like I said, I have no idea who it's going to end up being. But I think it's the thing that we're all going to be excited about as we head towards the summer transfer window is everyone loves signing a striker, don't they? It's always a big key moment. You've got to sign someone to score. To I think for Arsenal, this is such a key signing as well. Because as I've talked about, the age range of the two strikers we've got at the moment, Lack are going to go or we're only a year left. And the whole squad is being built at the moment. You look at it, you can see it emerging, this youthful, vibrant squad. Um, but you, you need a talisman striker that's going to take it through and it's going to score the goals. And if, if, you're not, if you haven't got one of those, then you're, you're going to struggle. You need someone who's going to get you these sort of 20, 30 goals a season. And so it's going to be a really key signing for this one. It's going to be one that the Arteta, Edu, everyone's going to be judged on the scouting network because if you get it wrong and you spend big money and you get it wrong when it comes to a striker, it's not easy to sort yourself out. Um, so it's going to be a really crucial signing for Arsenal. It's going to be interesting to see who they go for in the summer. But as I said, at the moment, I just, I'm not sure who that is going to be. Um, in terms of one of the strikers at the club, following Balogun, as I mentioned earlier, he is um, his future, you'd say, is certainly up for debate. I think he'll go in January. I'd be very surprised. and Not sold. I think he'll go on loan um, in January. He should have gone in the summer for me. It's just been a bit of a wasted first half of the season for him um, at under-23s level. He's just too good for it. He scores too many goals. It's not doing, benefiting him at any at all, really, in any way now. He needs to be out playing senior football, cutting his teeth in the championship, something like that, and really going up against senior professional defenders um he played for the under 21s in midweek and he scored his first goal at that level for england which was really good and he spoke he's been speaking about his future after that game he said i've played youth football for a little while i've obviously scored a lot of goals at that level and improved at that level drastically from where i started i do feel like i'm ready for a new challenge but i'm not sure what that might be it might be a loan um or if i'm needed at arsenal um then the gaffer knows that i'm definitely open to a new challenge but it's something um, and it's something I'll be ready. I know the potential I could have, and I know that I need to achieve. It's massive. I haven't achieved it yet. What I need now is just, what I've had now is gl glimpses, and things like that need to be worked on. The performances I'm putting in, all I can do at the moment, I know that I'm going in the right direction. So that's what Balogun's had to say about his future. 
he definitely needs a new challenge. He needs to go out there and play senior football now, and that's why I think he should go out on loan in January. It'd be really interesting to see him go to a decent championship club, maybe. I'm not sure the Premier League is quite what he needs to do yet. He needs to take that step out of under-23s football, maybe have five or six months in the championship, and then perhaps in the summer get a season-long loan in the Premier League and then really, really show us what you can do at that level. Um, and it'd be intriguing to see how he gets on because he's all got all the attributes to be a fabulous striker. Balogun, he just needs to go out and play now. It's just under 23s football is just not doing him any good anymore. He's just outgrown it and he needs to uh, he needs to go and play senior football somewhere. So hopefully that's something we're going to see in January and then we can all watch him have a very good five or six months and come back to Arsenal in the summer with his game taken up another level, um, which I think is something we all want to see. Um, just in terms of Jack Wiltshire, I keep getting lots of comments about Jack Wiltshire or questions about Jack Wiltshire. What's going to happen? Is he going to sign for Arsenal? I still think it's very unlikely that he's still training there. He's been speaking about that. Um, he said that he's not spoken to Arsenal um, since he's sort of first come into the club and had the role that he's had, which is obviously training with the first team, coaching with the younger teams as well. He says, I've not spoken since, um, since I've first come in in terms of my role at the club. I'm just really enjoying the coaching role and being part of the club. I'm just focusing on trying to get fit and put myself in the best possible position when January comes, I'm ready. Um, which is good to see because lots of people have been saying, oh, is he going to retire? Is he going to retire? He clearly still thinks he, need, he wants to play football, which he should because if he's fit, he's only 29. But I'm just not sure as, as nice a thought of it is and how romantic it is when it comes to football. Um, you know, I just I'm not sure it would be it would be Arsenal, and I don't think he's really expecting it either. But you know, with Xhaka, Xhaka's injury, El Neni going away to the African Cup of Nations, there is potentially a little bit of a shortage in midfield, so there is potential for a short-term contract, something like that. But I still think it's beyond it's probably beyond the realms of possibility he'll be heading somewhere else um he said again he was asking you know what do you want to do in january he said I, I think i'd like to try something abroad but that's not me saying i don't want to do anything in england in my mind i'd like to try something different after spending all these years here but we'll wait and see he did he did was training over in italy um during pre-season with a club didn't happen but maybe that's something he will look to explore in january but i think certainly clubs who are interested in wiltshire would have seen he's been training with the first team at arsenal for the last couple of months and that's going to put them put him um when it comes to the shop window in a better position than perhaps he was before it and hopefully he can go and get himself a good club and get away playing somewhere because that's what we want to see when it comes to jack wiltshire okay so away from a little bit of transfer um chatter um, in terms of Arsenal and injury latest, Thomas Partey um, looks like he's going to be staying. Ghana, he missed Ghana's first game in midweek, which was a draw, wasn't it? And that means they've got a win on Sunday against South Africa in their last World Cup qualifier. They were hoping that he was going to fly out on Friday and link up with the squad and still play in the second game. But my understanding is he hasn't flown out um, as they were hoping on Friday. He stayed at Arsenal for treatment on this injury. Um, so it's looking very, very unlikely unless he flies out today that he's going to be involved for Ghana in that crucial tie for him, for them and their World Cup hopes. Obviously, that's going to be a big disappointment for him. It's going to be a big disappointment for Ghana. But if he's not ready, he's not ready. And um, and yeah, Arsenal certainly wouldn't want him risking aggravating that injury further with that big game against Liverpool coming up under the, after the international break. My understanding of it, that Arsenal are still hoping that he will be available for that Liverpool game. And this is more of a precautionary thing rather than a really serious injury. But that's something we'll have to see how that progresses over the coming week. But in terms of him and Ghana and the international break, it's looking like bad news for them with Thomas Partey still at Arsenal. Elsewhere, like I said, Emil Smith-Rowe made his debut for England last night coming on as a substitute. In the second half in their 5-0 win against Algeria, really good for him. I do. I wonder if he'll start against San Marino in the second game, which I think is on Tuesday maybe. Um, I imagine Southgate's going to make quite a lot of changes for that game. England only need a point to qualify. I mean, they could play whoever they want and they'll get a point against San Marino at home to qualify. Um, this might be a good opportunity to play the likes of Smith Rowe, give him his first start. Um, he only came on for like the last 15 minutes or so yesterday, so he didn't have time to do too much. And the game was obviously dead and buried by that point, but still a massive moment for him, one that he said he's very, very proud of. Um, Kieran Tierney, just wanted to have a little word about him. I don't know if you've seen it or not. If you haven't, I urge you go and watch it. Absolutely brilliant challenge from Tierney um, in the Scotland game yesterday against Moldova. Scotland 2-0 up at that point, about 10 minutes to go. And Moldova got a penalty and uh, Craig Gordon saved it. But it just looked like it looped back up in the air and it looked like the, guy, the penalty taker was going to just tap in the rebound. And Tierney came flying in from somewhere 
um, just this brilliant sliding challenge. And as the ball dropped, he managed to put it behind for a corner. It was absolutely brilliant. So fair play to him. He played the full game, Tierney. Um, played very well as well. It was one lovely run down the right where he nutmegged a couple of people on this run. Looked knackered by the end of it. But good to see him looking full, fully fit um, and playing well. And it's going to be a big decision for Mikel Arteta after the international break of that Liverpool game. Do you stick with Nuno Tavares, who's played so well recently, or do you throw Tierney straight back in? Personally, I think given the game, given the opposition, I think Tierney will probably come back in for that one. And so it was good to see him looking so sharp yesterday with that clearance, which uh, which was an impressive one. All right, everyone, thank you very much for watching. Appreciate your time. As always, do enjoy your weekend, whatever it is you are up to, your Arsenal-free weekend. Don't worry, we're not going to have too much longer until we can start talking about Arsenal and that big, big game against Liverpool next weekend. Have a good weekend, everyone. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.